That better? There we go. So um, I work on AppArmor for Canonical. Uh, just gonna go through what happened this year. Uh, last year I said uh, nothing new until uh, we upstreamed the patch sets. Because uh, there's been a, a long development cycle on this updated AppArmor 3 stuff. Uh, and unfortunately it didn't happen. <laughs> there actually hasn't been uh, a lot done besides working on those patch sets and revising them. Uh, but we'll, we'll cover what was done besides those for a minute. Uh, we hit uh, a lot of documentation updates for some reason users like that. <laughs> uh, we had, uh, Christian's been doing a lot of work on user space util cleanups and making them better. Uh, he's the SUSE maintainer uh, for AppArmor. Uh, we, we have a, sped up our compile again a little bit by going and finally getting some parallel compile going. Uh, we're getting not bad compile times out of it now. Uh, certainly better than it was in the past. Uh, we've started moving the user space to Git. Uh, unfortunately, most of the developers at this time don't know Git, and so we're kind of doing it slow. We moved the policy over to Git first. Uh, get a feel for the BZR conversion, because we just used to be in BZR. Uh, what we lose, what we don't lose, what we need to do. And give the, the developers some time to get used to Git before we make the full transition. Um, we did some prototyping of uh, chain, uh, a group change profile set con uh, for all threads in a process. So right now, when you do a set con, chain profile, whatever you want to call it, that's limited to the current task or TID, whatever. Um, so you, you do it on a single threaded process. Um, unfortunately, we've run into situations where people want to do this on a thread group. Uh, the specific case that led to this one was due to the launcher, that, uh, a launcher that the phone people wanted to use. Um, what they do is, um, the phone, most of the stuff uses QML for the Ubuntu phone, and uh, QML maps tons of libraries and does all kinds of resource setup, and it's really slow. So they wanted to do a sort of a zygote process type thing like Android has done in the past. Um, and we put a whole bunch of restrictions on them so they wouldn't run into the memory mapping problems and everything else. But anyways, what they ran into was they couldn't do it because they have multiple threads, and when you try to set the context, well, it's a mess, right? Um, so we prototyped out some stuff for this. We're not using it right now. Um, what it does is it, it's, it basically does, you do one call to, to set the, the task before it launches any threads that it wants to be doing this group tracking, that it's gonna change. It sets up a special cred for that, and all its threads will inherit that. And then when you do that call, we use our uh, underlying capability to change the, uh, update the, the profile on tasks that are live. Um, there was some work on updating the user space permission checking and caching, because there's a whole bunch of user space daemon stuff that's doing that stuff now. Um, we released the 2.10 and user space, and we're into the 2.11 betas. Uh, most of what's happened over the last year, though, is uh, bug fixing and revisions of the, the code, uh, the development code base. So, um, of, of what we were talking about last year, uh, I briefly mentioned G settings. There's actually not a ton of work in this. This isn't anything fabulous or very different from what has been done in the past for the X server or Dbus. It's just a user space daemon that's trusted in its domain that's uh, been integrated into policy. Um, Allison Lordy and some other people in GNOME have been working on uh, a daemon. So what happens is, I don't know if you know how G settings decomps works. Uh, they go in and they mem map the the, the files that they want to access into the address space of the process, and then they have access to all the settings, and it's nice and fast, and uh, but it's very insecure. Um, and unfortunately, 
we're trying to confine some desktop stuff and with Snappy and with the phone and whatever. And so how we, we, we did this was just a priv step, right? Uh, you set up a daemon, uh, update the library, or use uh, pre LD, LD preload to get a new library, whatever, or new symbols anyways. And so instead of the, the regular G settings, what happens, it, it checks, finds out that, hey, I'm confined now, so I'm gonna run out to the daemon and uh, let it, it, it manage and do the permission checking and it'll send stuff back to me. Um, of course, they wanted it to be really fast, so they need to cache a whole bunch of stuff. So instead of mem mapping the whole file, they're caching everything in, in the, the, the application at startup, basically. So it, it does a whole bunch of communication to Dbus, and uh, I think they're over Dbus right now. Or maybe they moved to a private socket, I can't remember. It was at Dbus, on Dbus at one point. Um, and so, None of this is AppArmor specific, except for the policy integration itself. Uh, you know, it could be leveraged with any other LSM or any other project when this actually lands. Um, but you know, that was some of the work that was done. Um, so the big AppArmor development cycle has been all around uh, the labeling updates, the, the policy namespaces, the stacking. Um, so it's yet another namespace, right? Um, we've heard of tons of different namespaces. Uh, this one is specifically for AppArmor policy. We have no real desire necessarily to see an LSM namespace. I don't know that it makes sense for other LSMs. And we're fine just keeping it where it is in this, within our system, um, at least for now. Um, it's, App Armor namespaces are hierarchical. Um, each namespace contains, you can have a separate set of policy, it's a way of grouping policy. Um, you have, they, they, they control what can be loaded, so you know, can if this task is in that namespace, then it might be able to load to it, but it can't load to other namespaces necessarily, uh, especially up the tree. So uh, anything that would be in like, say, namespace three is not gonna have any access to the system namespace. Uh, they also control visibility so you can virtualize and hide things. So if you're in namespace three, it can see its children, namespace three, four and five, but it can't see the system, it can't see namespace two, it can't see namespace one. Um, pretty simple. Um, most interfaces have been app virtualized to the, the namespaces. We do have a few leaks around audit, obviously, um, and uh, the policy directory right now isn't been, hasn't been virtualized. Uh, there needs to be some updates we need to do to the LSM file system, security FS, to be able to do that. Uh, so we will land those after the fact. Um, we have uses besides uh, containers for these uh, user-defined policies. So one of the goals is that users will be able, to, it'll get opened up eventually. It won't be at first. So that users can actually load their own policy for their own applications if the system decides that they're gonna allow them to do that. Uh, and Snappy wants to use it for logical grouping so it can manage its policy off in its own little space. Uh, so we don't have to worry about it. Pardon me? Yes. It is fully independent of other namespaces. You can have namespaces, an AppArmor namespace, and say stick one set of tasks in the AppArmor namespace and it shares the other namespaces with the rest of the system. So um, there is, while it's fully independent right now, there is discussions about whether we should require user namespaces to always get a new AppArmor namespace. Uh, we don't do that right now, partly because the hooks aren't there for it. Um, so for our initial implementation right now, we'll talk about that in a little bit uh, with the LXD stuff. It, it's all manual right now, but do you have something, Mimi? Yeah, 
we could have a generic one if it makes sense. Uh, it does not have to be specific to AppArmor. I mean, obviously AppArmor will leverage it and it certainly has its own set of features towards it, but uh, we're more than willing to work towards a generic one as well. Um, Okay, so that's interesting. I hadn't, I hadn't, hadn't heard of that. I mean, I, I know Casey and with Smack and SE Linux aren't too thrilled with uh, namespacing their policy. <laughs> I'm putting words in your mouth. You're quiet on the subject. Yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, anything else in there? No. So stacking is the other really big part with this labeling stuff. Um, we've iterated on this a lot and fixed a lot of bugs, and it's it's pretty stable. Ubuntu's running it, been running it for a couple of years now through these iterations and making our users suffer through some of this. <laughs> um, basically, uh, tasks can be confined by more than one profile. It's the, uh, if you will think about it, it's the intersection of the different uh, dynamic intersection of these to find the actual type or the enforcement on confinement. Um, they can, so there's the concept with this that of, because uh, the stacking can cross namespaces, so you can have, a, you know, you have like in the, you have a, a task with just a single profile on it, but you could actually have a task with, uh, and this is the LXD case, uh, you have a, a profile for the system level of the container itself around the whole container. And then all the tasks in the container have their own profiles being applied. So we're crossing a namespace boundary there. Um, and so there's the concept for each task, what its current namespace is. And this is part of how we determine where tasks can load policy. Um, the, the child can't see the parent namespace, it just thinks it's the current namespace, whatever, it, or the root. Um, and that's where they can manipulate if they have sufficient permissions. We use cap mac admin in the container as well, or in the namespace. So if you're in a user namespace, you have to have the, the proper permissions. Uh, we spend a lot of time uh, fuzzing our interfaces and uh, hardening them against possible attacks. I'm not saying everything is fixed. We hope it is. Um, uh, when you do the permission checks, inner, inner, procedure, inner task permission checks anyways, it's, it's between the labeling in, within a namespace. So when you have a stack with multiple namespaces on it, you're only checking between the, the tasks labelings within the, that namespace set. Um, you treat them almost completely independently at the policy level. You just, you don't have to worry about it. The system takes care of it. Um, so for LXD, LXC, we've been working to integrate this and it's been very good and helpful to flush, flush out the bugs, flush them out, whatever. Um, so we spent some time poking at the, the patches that were floated last fall for SMAC namespaces. Uh, and they're, they're good. Uh, we played with them, but they weren't completely sufficient for what we need or would like to have uh, for our policy. Uh, so when we get around to it, we'll, we will have to post out some more patches. Things like unshare, we don't have any control over unshare right now. Um, but not, and pivot root, there is a pivot root cook right now for permissions, but, uh, and again, what we would like is we'd like a secondary hook that is a, allows us to do some updating of creds uh, seamlessly. Uh, you can't really do that in the permission hooks because obviously other LSMs or whatever might be denying things in the permission hook. Uh, but we're not gonna do any of those until we get the base code up. Uh, the big push is just get this base code up. Uh, so an example of what we're doing with LXD, um, LXD, like I said, has to do a manual setup. You have your system, 
there's tasks on the system that are outside of the container. It sets up a container, and the container has an LXD profile around it. And then within the container, the container is loading its own policy, and then the tasks within that container get that policy. So they're, they're a stack across the namespace, or app armor namespace, of the uh, two profiles. It's a composition of them. Um, we have some really tight restrictions on how this can be used right now, where there has to be a one-to-one -one mapping between the namespace, our user namespace, and the app armor namespace. They have to be at the exact same level, which removes alternate use cases. You can't, you can't use user policy type stuff with them right now or anything like that. Or even Alex, uh, a snappy grouping, which hasn't landed yet either. Um, and they obviously need the cap Mac admin uh, within the, the user namespace as well uh, to manage their own policy within it. Uh, it's interesting kicking around. I almost, I broke my demo, so I'm not gonna bother with that. Uh, so what's the backlog? Really, it's upstreaming. I mean, this is, this is it. Uh, hopefully within the next month, the, we'll put an RFC up uh, so people can look at this. Um, and we're shooting for 4.10, 4.11 time frame, depending on feedback, and uh, it's not gonna hit 4.9. We do have other backlog, it's, this is a list that's way too long to even fit, I mean, we could go on for pages and pages. Uh, there's, there's always so much to do, uh, I don't know. Uh, Lots of virtualization stuff for the namespace stacking and uh, integration and tools cleanup and <laughs> whatever. Any other questions? All right, thank you. <laughs>